NX Edge style Beelzemon Blast Mode. Hey, how's it going? In today's video, we have the NX Edge style Beelzemon Blast Mode from Bandai. I got this figure from Amazon and it cost me $91.89. That's with tax. Goddamn tax. And hey, a new backdrop. And due to some filming errors, you might notice some back and forth between my old grey backdrop and my new black one. So sorry if it looks kind of weird. NX Edge style figures are well painted, chibi proportioned, highly detailed figures. I already reviewed a couple of them on my channel if you want to check them out. And yeah, they're kind of expensive, which is their biggest issue. But if you want this specific one, hopefully this review is helpful. Starting with the box, if you never got an NX Edge style figure before, they're very poseable, they look really good. And for the Beelzmon, doesn't look like it's going to be an exception to that rule. We already got some images of the nice paint job, and some images of the weapons, which look awesome on this figure. That being said, let's open it up and see what we got. Similar to the previous NXS style figures, we got a small mini manual here. It comes with parts that need to be assembled and a variety of extras and accessories that are interchangeable. Extras are always good. From buying the figure, this is what you can expect. Oh, don't worry, the guns just fell out, they do come included. And look at the tiny gun, it's so cute. But just at a glance right now, this figure looks pretty good. Going in this review with some pretty good optimism. So, yeah, my wing broke. But don't worry, it was user error, I was cleaning up my table and I knocked it off by accident. I did repair it by drilling a hole through the ends that I broke, pinning it with a paper clip, and just super gluing everything on. Like I said, complete user error, but be careful when you're handling the wings, the attachment point here is very thin. And because how big the wings are, it kind of puts pressure there. Just be careful when you're handling it. Good thing I'm so used to breaking things that I could fix everything pretty much easily. So learn from my mistake, be careful with it. On to appearance, I present to you the NX Edge style Beelzemon Blast Mode. A beautiful looking figure, but let's zoom in. Similar to the other NX Edge I reviewed, paint job is very well done. I didn't see much in terms of paint spillage, where the paint would hit other areas that weren't supposed to have that color. There are some small seam lines, which makes sense because they still have to assemble it. I do like these small little details like the skulls on the shoulders, shows how well the paint job was done. And I'm not sure if they used stickers or they actually painted the eyes themselves, but those look very good as well. Also absolutely love the jacket, with the silver painted on details. Makes the zipper and belt buckles pop quite a bit. They also did a very good job molding the clothing. The folds and ripples on the clothes add some nice texture to the figure. The paint they used was very nice, I do like it, especially on the head, it has some little nice sparkles on it. And let's not forget the wings, which have a nice little satin color. They did an incredible job with the molding. As we see the nice detail of the feathers, and I love how there's multiple layers of the feathers. Gives the wings a much fuller appearance. But it ain't all perfect, there are some nub marks on the wings. And yeah, they're on both of them. Not sure if it's just exclusively on mines, or if it's part of the manufacturing. If you get one, let me know. Luckily, you are able to sand them down, these ones aren't too terrible, but you can see them still. You may have also noticed some of the guns are actually in their holsters on the back and on the side of the shin. Cool little extra that we'll take a look at later on. And initially I thought it would have a balance issue because the wings are kind of big and I would have to use the tail as a kickstand. But no, it actually balances really well with those large feet, standing straight without any problems. Overall appearance, I have no complaints. It looks as equally good as the other Digimon NX Edge I reviewed. But how is its articulation? Would those large wings get in the way? Let's take a look. Starting with the head, it can move side to side like so. Look up and down this much. There's another joint in the neck allowing it to extend and retract. The head can 360 rotate, but the collar on the jacket does make it a little difficult. Arm can abduct this high. There's also an extra joint over here allowing the shoulder to internally rotate. A 360 arm rotation is possible, but like I thought, the wings do kind of get in the way. I'm not going to force it though, because small figure, small pegs, meaning they could break. Not really sure if I should count this, but the forearm does have a small little wiggle. And for elbow band, we got this much for the ribbon arm. Gonna show the other arm as well, because I believe the ribbon does inhibit some bending. Lastly for the arm, the hand can 360 rotate, with a small wiggle that I'm not gonna count. For the body, there's no side bend, ab crunch, or back extension, but it is able to 360 rotate, though the wings do get in the way. The tail as well. Flipping around to see the gorgeous wings, uh, the whole connection does wiggle. This is where I broke the wing, you can't move it there. The only movement point is over here on the top of the wings. I'm going to be using the other side because I don't want to break the side I glued on. But it's able to fold up and down very nicely. And you know what, yeah, here, the other side can fold like this. 
And unfortunately, there's no other movement here. These uh, little cable things are able to wiggle about. And uh, that's it. One of the guns is stored here, and you could detach it, but I'll be showing you that later on. Okay, coming to the legs, we got this much of a split. Eh, not much, but not bad. This much of a high kick, which is pretty good. And back kick is limited because of wings. And we have a really small upper thigh rotation. Knee bends at a 90 degree. The shin is surprisingly able to 360 rotate. As for the foot, it's able to dorsiflex this much. And we got this much of an extension. And this is minimal side to side movement, but not going to really count that. Overall, articulation is comparable to the other NX Edge kit. Decent range of motion on some parts, while other parts are limited or just inhibited by the wings. Despite that, you're still able to put in a variety of cool poses, and that's pretty much the most important part. But as you might know, cool poses needs cool weapons. So let's move on to the most important part, extras and accessories, with some of the extras being interchangeable. And firstly, we do have a mouth option. Currently equipped is the closed mouth option, but if you want to change it up, you just need to pop off the face by pulling it off, slide down the mouth, and attach the alternative mouth. And there you go, it might be hard to see because of the shadow over there, but he's now showing his teeth. Looking like an angry boy. Next up for hand options, we got these open hands with the claws being splayed out. They look pretty good from afar, and the light reflects off of them pretty well, but as you zoom in, you do see the seam line on the claws, which doesn't look particularly that great. But like I said, you do have to zoom in to clearly see this. But realistically, you're going to be viewing this from afar, in which case, the imperfections are much more hidden, and it looks pretty good. We also got a pair of holding hands. The mold looks very good, and they're also very well painted. Really love the extra detail they put on the textures of the gloves, which is always a good thing because these figures are quite expensive, but at least you know they take the extra step in putting tiny details on tiny parts. And of course, these hands aren't just for show, they actually have a purpose. So let's do a hand swap, you can easily pull them out and stick the other hands back in. Now of course, it wouldn't be Beelzemon without his guns, which these hands are made for. One is equipped on the back, and one is equipped on the holster on the leg. Though when you do remove them, they just leave this little peg sticking out. Though the holster on the back is at least removable, so you can kind of hide that. Unfortunately, the one on the leg can't be removed, so it kind of just sticks out. As for the design of the gun, they're definitely the least impressive thing on this figure. I also did notice some small nub marks on the side of the guns. That with the uh, giant hole on the top of it, because of the attachment point, it doesn't really look appealing. But still happy they added this as an option. And at least they're very easy to equip. You can just slide them right into the hands. Also, the wings are detachable. I forgot to mention this. Very cool, just in case you didn't want the blast mode. They give you an option to display it either or. And not gonna lie, those small little pea shooters on this chibi Beelzemon looks adorable. Now finally, we got this giant blaster arm. I'm not even entirely sure what it's called, but it looks very cool. Well painted, there's a good amount of details. There's a small seam line that runs down the end over here, but the whole design would distract you from that anyways. To equip it, it's going to be a little different from the hands. You're going to have to detach the whole forearm and attach the socket right into the peg over here. It's a pretty large weapon, but I'm happy to say the connection is pretty strong and it holds it well. And just look at this pose, it looks absolutely beastly. Still no balance issues with that large gun extended like that. But to help with your posing, of course this NX Edge figure comes with a display base. Firstly, we got the base, and yeah, it's in a pattern where you can attach it to other bases. You're also given these three structural stands, allowing you to actually stack the display bases on top of each other. We also got this flexible arm you can actually use to attach Beelzemon itself. And I like this arm more than the other one that's given to you, just because it's easier to be moved around, allowing easier posing without falling apart. Comparing it to the other arm, which you kind of have to detach it, you can do so from either end. This design makes it easier to support extra weight because you can lock it in, but it's kind of finicky and sometimes when you're posing a move than kit, it might just come apart. Yeah, just kind of annoying. I like using the other one. And whatever arms you use, you could pretty much attach it to any of the holes in the base. And like all things in life, Beelzebun also has a butthole, which you could just stick an action base in. But having it on this display opens up so many more possibilities for posing. Something these NX Edge figures do very well. But like I always said about these figures, not enough to justify the price, especially since they're kind of small. Because even with the base, it only stands around 6 inches, a little over 15 centimeters. And without the base, it's around 4.5 inches, a little bit over 11 centimeters, from foot to wing, with a wingspan of 8 inches, or 20.32 centimeters. So yeah, not really a big figure. It's even dwarfed by the Intrigator X-72, 
which is 144th scale, and next to the Master Grade, it's completely tiny. Same can be said with this HMM Koenig Wolf, but still comparable height to Charmander over here. And of course, here it is next to the other NX Edge Digimon figures I got. Aside from the large wings, they're pretty much all the same size. Then we got Haro, Dormon, DK, the old school Terminator Assault Squad, a Predator tank I need to build, and a rubber ducky. It is kind of small, so not big of a shelf presence, though together with the other NX Edge Digimon figures, it looks pretty cool. Another NX Edge Digimon review finished. What are my final thoughts? Well, the appearance has always been the strongest aspect for these figures. They always do a pretty good job painting them. I always love the molding, it gives a lot of nice surface level detail and textures. But it's not perfect, there are some bad numb marks like I mentioned earlier on the wings. But can't say if it's exclusive to my figure or not. The articulation, though ain't the best, they're not horrible either. Still great for posability. The extras and accessories are very fun to play around with. And the cheapy proportions are very cute. But of course, the biggest negative to these figures are the fact that they're very expensive. $81, keep in mind before taxes, is kinda ridiculous. If not for my love for Digimon, I would've definitely never gotten it. Though expensive, I still do not regret buying it, but I can completely understand if that price point would push you away. And hopefully this review helped you with deciding whether or not you want it. Thanks for watching my video, I hope you like it, I enjoy making it. Let me know what you think. Would you purchase this figure? Why or why not? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, because I got this blast mode, I got Crimson Mode Gallantmon as well. Just waiting for the delivery now. Thanks again for watching my video. Take care. Bye.